Last week, an accident at a uranium enrichment plant in Russia left one worker dead and hundreds injured. But was this a nuclear accident? Hey everyone, Charlie here from the Atomic Age, and I just wanted to go over this accident that I heard about last week at a Russian uranium enrichment plant. A colleague of mine sent me this article from the Moscow Times about this accident, and it has to deal with uranium enrichment plant and uranium hexafluoride, which is the chemical form of uranium that is used to enrich uranium. The enriching of uranium uses uranium in the form of uranium hexafluoride, UF6, because this form of uranium allows you to form a gas relatively easily. And to enrich uranium, you need to use gas. Gaseous centrifuges, the preferred way of modern enrichment work by rapidly spinning uranium in a centrifuge to get the separation of the fissile from the non-fissile components of the uranium. That is the fuel and the non-fuel parts. Uranium hexafluoride is a, let's say, interesting material. Although it has the radioactive element uranium in it, uranium hexafluoride is mostly a chemical concern. And that is because uranium hexafluoride has six fluorine atoms in it. When uranium hexafluoride interacts with water, be it water vapor, so anytime it touches the air, because there's always some water vapor in air, it will react with the water in the air and become hydrofluoric acid, which is a particularly nasty acid. Hydrofluoric acid interferes with your nerve function, so it can, uh, it feels like you have not been affected by it at first until much later, so not not the most pleasant stuff to work with but getting back to the accident at hand here it was a depleted uranium uf6 cylinder which is a uh, depleted uranium is a waste product from uranium enrichment it, it has less uh uranium fuel in it than natural uranium which already has a very little amount of fuel in it so depleted uranium uh, does not have any criticality concern, so there's no chance of a chain reaction from depleted uranium hexafluoride. Now, the article goes on to mention that many workers were treated at a nearby hospital for radiological concerns, but I would be much more concerned about hydrofluoric acid concerns. Uranium isn't that dangerous in terms of radioactivity and radiation. Not to say uh, you should be ingesting any any uranium, but in the short term, with these with this kind of uranium hexafluoride accident, you really want to be more concerned about uranium hexafluoride exposure itself from a chemical perspective and hydrofluoric acid exposure. But the article does not mention anything about that, just the radiation. Article also mentions radiation levels, which is standard for something like this. You're not going to have to worry about any kind of radiation level or radioactive contamination risk to the outside world from such an accident like this. Depleted uranium again, rather docile from a radioactive standpoint. So something you may not be aware of is the, the International Nuclear and Radiological Event Scale here. So this is a, a scale used to measure the severity of nuclear accidents. It's like a, it's like a hurricane scale or uh, an earthquake scale. Each level is about 10 times worse than the next. And yeah, this scale considers the uh, impact on people in the environment, radiological barriers and control. So that's like containment buildings and like how well this material is contained. And then like defense and depth, as they say here, you know, the accident didn't result in anything detrimental, but how did the defense and depth means there's like multiple barriers to an accident happening. Like for a reactor, there's like a, a emergency cooling system and there's a backup to the emergency cooling system. Did So like did one of those backups not work, that would be like a defense in depth failure. As some uh, more examples we got here with like radiation sources and transport. Uh, if you've heard of the Guyana incident in Brazil, very bad incident. That's a level five on this scale. And yeah, there you go, Chernobyl level seven. We also got wind scale there at level five, Three Mile Island at level five. Tokai Mora is the last criticality accident to have happened in human history, and that's a level four. Sellafield is one people mention a lot. That one's a level three on this scale. So yeah, there you go. I wanted to bring this up. I thought this was interesting to go over how the, uh, you know, the article calls it an accident from common parlance, but on this scale, not even an anomaly, maybe an anomaly, not even an incident. So accident is the, the common parlance, but from a technical standpoint, could, but could not be further from a nuclear accident. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.